So the last thing we want to look at here is monetary policy. Monetary policy is basically anything that adjusts the money supply. Now let's just talk a little bit about why is it so important to be able to adjust the money supply. Let's just draw a simple graph here where we have quantity of money and the interest rate. So interest rate, that would be the money you pay to borrow money or to save money. That money demand is described as being downward sloping, meaning the lower the interest rate, the less you want to save, right? Because the reward for saving is very low, but also the more that you borrow because it's really, really cheap to borrow. So the lower the interest rate, the more you want but the money supply is completely vertical because it's determined by the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve determines the money supply. So what if I have what's called um, contractionary monetary policy? What that means is that I'm reducing the money supply. And what that means is that, so I'm going to call it M subscript S, so it's shifting to the left. And here's my money demand, I'm going to describe it as M subscript D. You'll see here that what it means is that the interest rate is going to go up. Now, why is that important? Because as the interest rate goes up, consumption falls. Why does consumption fall? Because as the interest rate goes up, people save more money, and also people do not borrow as much. Also, investment falls. Because why would businesses or people borrow money to build things when they have to pay so much. The result of both of these things falling is that GDP also falls. So you see here that what contractionary monetary policy does is you're trying to basically um, somewhat shrink the economy. Now, why would you do that? The reason why you would engage in contractionary monetary policy You would do this if if the economy was going too well, if it was too good. Um, and so what you would want to do is basically cool down the economy with this contractionary monetary policy. Now... What about expansionary monetary policy? Here I am increasing the money supply. And again, the way that that would look is a now rightward shift of the money supply. Here's my money demand, and you can see that the interest rate is falling. And as the interest rate falls, then consumption rises, investment rises, which basically means that GDP rises. And you would do this if the economy needs help. 
you would engage in this expansionary policy. Now, related to all this then is, how do you do this? Like, how do you actually pull off um, changing the money supply? And there are three primary ways that this is done. Now, if you, you know, if you're trying to read like newer entries about how the Federal Reserve does its job, there are new things that have been done since um, since the, um, the 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 financial crisis, essentially. Um, I, I don't want to get too detailed here. Um, I just want to deal with the classic three. Um, And that would be, the first would be open market operations. Open market operations are the buying and selling of existing government debt. There is the, um, there are the reserve requirements. That would be how much banks must hold. And then there would be the discount rate. And that would be the interest rate banks pay to borrow from the Federal Reserve. So let's talk about each of these. Um, each of these three things, um, what I will argue here, is that each of these three things change the money supply. So let's start first with open market operations. Open market operations are the things used the most. And the where this is done is the um, Open Market Committee, the Federal Open Market Committee, the FOMC, the Federal Reserve Open Market Committee. They decide how things are going to change. And what happens here is that if they buy debt... We're going to say that that increases the money supply. Now, how does it do that? Because the Federal Reserve, by buying existing debt, let's say that I hold U.S. government debt, what that does is they pay for it with newly created money. And that, in turn, then increases the money supply because they're printing new cash. If they sell debt that they already have, which is actually what they're doing right now, um, so I'm making this, I'm already going to date myself here, I'm making this in December of 2017. Right now the Federal Reserve is getting rid of debt that they hold, and what they're doing, by doing that they are decreasing the money supply. Because, right, they're going to get paid for the debt they're selling to others, and they're going to get that cash from others, and they're going to rip it up, basically. And that would, in essence, serve to decrease the money supply. For reserve requirements, this is not used that often, but if in this case they lower the reserve requirements, then that increases the money supply. Why? Because then banks can basically lend out more money. The simple deposit multiplier will become larger, right? Because the simple deposit multiplier is one over the required reserve ratio. Um, so if I change it from 20% to 10%, right? You can see how my multiplier becomes larger. A higher reserve requirement that decreases the money supply. And then we've got the discount rate. This would be the interest rate that 
banks pay when they borrow from the Federal Reserve. Now, when the Federal Reserve is lending out money, they are newly creating that money. So in this case, if they um, lowered the discount rate, That increases the money supply because then basically banks might say, hey, it's cheap to borrow from the Fed, so let's do it. And if they raise the discount rate, that tends to decrease the money supply. Now, the problem with all of this, some of the limits here are that, you know, Banks don't always, for instance, just hold the minimum amount of reserves. So that would mean that this isn't that effective. Plus, banks don't like it when you all of a sudden change how much or how little they can lend out. And also, people might not be reactive to what the Federal Reserve is doing in terms of buying or selling debt. And that tends to happen when there are um, uh, asset bubbles, um, like the housing crisis that existed.